Hey everybody, this is Ori from Astral Web, and this is the first video uh, explaining and teaching about Google Analytics. Uh, this video set uh, is mostly for beginners, but uh, we go into a little more advanced or at least intermediate uh, tips on the way, and this is the first introduction video. Uh, so uh, what I want to start with is to explain a little bit about what Google Analytics is and what it can do. Um, so the, the, the main idea of Google Analytics is it's a free software by Google, um, which you install a tracking code on your website, on your pages, and it'll help you on a, provide detail and statistics about your users. And what that means is it'll, um, every time someone visits your website, it'll track uh, a non-personal uh, identifiable uh, information, and it'll give you stats about the visits of the people who come to your website, their browsers, where they came from to your website, which source they came from. Um, it'll help you understand uh, which segments of users convert on your website, which don't, uh, what people are looking for, when, which pages people leave your website, which pages people come to your website, and all these other information, um, uh, detailed information, which we're going to get into in detail in every single video we're going to follow up with this. Um, so really, it's a very, very important software which every single webmaster must have in order to understand their efforts, their marketing efforts, uh, their users, and tr to try to help promote the website in a better way. So using this data to come to business conclusions, to personal conclusions, uh, and improving your website and helping your users find what they're looking for, do what they're looking for, and just overall c continue to uh, move forward and improve. Okay. Um, so that's kind of the, the detail itself. So what I wanted to, to do right now is uh, to show you a few things, just a few basic things um, on the dashboard itself in a few pages so you can kind of get a little bit familiar so the next videos will flow quicker. Um, so this is a typical a, um, Google Analytics page. Um, so as you can see, I just wanted to show you the different elements. So uh, to the left-hand side, you're going to find all of the different metrics, all of the different areas uh, on the left and you'll have real time and intelligence events in your dashboard and audience and acqui acquisition and all of that um so what that means basically um which we're going to go into the next videos in short our real time is you can see actual visitors that are right now on your website okay so you can see what locations they came from which traffic sources um what pages they're visiting and what kind of conversions they're doing Okay, um, the next one that's that's important is the audience. So you can see things like that their geolocation, which city they're coming from, which state, uh, if they're using mobile or desktop, if they're um, uh, coming, if they have, if, if their profiles are set up with certain interests, you can see if they're new visitors versus returning visitors and a few others. So this is again is about the audience itself. The next one, acqu acquisition, is more talking about the sources and the places that your visitors came from prior to visiting your website. So, for example, if they um, went to Google search and they typed in your brand name or something that's re relevant to uh, your product, and then they clicked on either an ad or a uh, organic result, and they came to your website, Google will identify that, so you can know where your visit visitors are coming from, and if your marketing efforts are actually working correctly, right? If you're running ads, you want to see that people are coming from your ads from specific sources to specific pages, and we'll go into that later. Um, so that's the acquisition. The behavior is more about um, the flow of, of the visitors, right? So what are they doing? They're coming from specific, they're landing on specific pages. They're moving on to other pages. Um, how fast is your uh, website functioning? Are they using the search? Are they um, triggering some events that we set up, some kind of goals? And uh, other, other things such as experiments, which is a huge thing we'll go into in a specific video. And in short, experiments are, um, a, are actions that you can take on your website to run two different kinds of tests at once. And you can test, for example, um, a specific page if uh, in two different variations to see what your users like better and then therefore continue to improve your website. So we'll go into detail on that, okay? Um, the next thing are conversions, which in my opinion is probably the most important 
part of Google Analytics. So um, in addition to just installing this tracking code on your website, you need to always have in mind, uh, one, what are you going to do with this data that you look in Google Analytics? Um, what are all these numbers and graphs and, and data mean? And the second thing is how do you feed into Google Analytics additional information to be able to uh, monitor your goals and your, your events and your conversions in a better way? So the basic installing of the tracking code is a, provides plenty of information, but it's not enough. So what we're going to go into in the next videos are talking about how you set up goals, how you think of goals, what are you know, how you define your goals, um, and uh, how you input additional information into Google Analytics with some coding, and uh, then be able to read that correctly to understand and decide how to improve your website and how to improve the experience of your, your users. Um, so th th those are kind of the ideas behind that. So uh, I'll just go into a few other things, a few small things about the dashboard, about the, sorry, the um, pages on Google Analytics. So again, on the left, we have all of our navigation. On the top right, we always have our date. So uh, depending on what, you, what kind of data you want to look at, sometimes you'll look at daily uh, or a week back, or sometimes you'll look at a year back. Um, but what you can also do is you can compare specific times to another time. So for example, um, it may not be enough on certain cases to look um, from one month in comparison back to another month because sometimes there's holidays, there's seasonal things, there's trends. Um, so sometimes you might want to, let's say, compare uh, one date, let's say August 1st to November 7th to the year prior, right? And so what that does is tries to help you understand in this case, um, how how the, the year prior you've moved forward or not um, and how you can kind of segment. So you can do uh, different uh, comparisons, but that's another thing. So a date range is very, very important, right? Um, now let's go here. Okay, so another thing is a lot of your pages are going to have these headers on top. So um, there's very interesting things such as exporting to CSV or to your Google Docs. Um, and setting up email reports. So based on the data you have, you can send automatic reports, which we'll go into as well. Um, so below here, you have kind of a graph uh, for the specific section that you're on right now. And you can see that you can sort it by day or week or hourly. And uh, it's always good to see an up graph in, in, in specific uh, reports, right? So here you can very easily hover over and see the specific time frame of the week or the month and see that you're moving forward, OK? And um, this, again, is, so some of the other things that are important to mention are um, sessions, users, page views, all of these. So I'm going to go quickly into these things that repeat very, very often, OK? So um, in short, let's look at here, for example, a session. And here you always have question marks, by the way. So you can um, either ask me on the video, or you can kind of look on the question marks or search Google documentation. So really, a session itself um, is a set period of time that uh, your users are active on your website. Um, so what that means is, let's say a user um, comes to your website, and they visit uh, the home page, and then they go to your information page, and then they go to your contact page. So they're kind of jumping from one page to the other. Now, a session um, will kind of monitor what activity they're doing on the website when they visit. But a uh, session has a time frame itself. So by default in Google Analytics, a session will um, complete, it'll stop a monitoring a specific unit of session when after 30 minutes after you've last uh, done some kind of action or visited uh, your last page on the website. So for example, if I came to your, my uh, someone's website and I visited their contact page and then um, I just you know, left the website. So uh, if I don't come back within 30 minutes after I clicked on this, this contact page, my session will expire. So if I come back an hour later, a new session will trigger. So you've got to be careful um, when you look at this number, what that actually means, right? Um, so sessions, again, you know, it could be, there could be multiple sessions per specific users, right? If you have people that come uh, return again, uh, many times, you should kind of note that and try to figure that out. Now, you can, in the settings of analytics, change that number 
um, but uh, you should think about what that means if you want to change this 30 minutes, okay? Um, again, next next uh, uh, thing is percentage of new se sessions. So again, um, you know, percentage of visitors that have a first time visited your website, okay? Uh, new users is basically similar thing, right? Um, so the number of uh, visitors that came for the first time, okay? Uh, and as you notice, these are under acquisition. You see these kind of call this uh, column that talks about these three specific columns, okay? Um, next one is the behavior column, right? So a bounce rate is a very important uh, metric, which basically talks about the percentage of visitors that entered your website from any source. It doesn't matter how they got to your website. Maybe they typed in www.yourdomain or maybe they came from Google or from Facebook. And the percentage of people that entered your website and immediately left after they saw their first page. So these people did not visit more than one page. They entered your website in any way to any page and they immediately left. So um, what that means in short is the, um, many in many cases, you don't you want people to visit more than one page if they receive all the information they need on one page it's okay but in many cases you want your visitors to visit more than one page so the the rule of thumb for most cases is the lower your bounce rate is that means the more people visit more than one page the better um now obviously you can you know this is an average of the entire site on our specific date range um, but each different medium and page and segment all has different ones. So averages are sometimes um, a little tricky to look at. You always want to look at the very specific things. So for example, our Facebook bounce rate here is much lower than our average. So maybe we should be focusing more on Facebook or looking at why Facebook users are more engaged on our website rather than, let's say, Google Organic. Um, and we'll go into those details more, okay? Um, the next one is the pages per session. What is the average number? What are the numbers here on a, how many pages are people visiting on average, right? Take all of the people, for example, on the entire site or all of the people that came from Yahoo, for example, right? And see what are their page views. So on average, they visit 2.16, right? Um, so, a, the, you know, this is an important metric for your, your specific case, okay? Uh, the next one is the average session duration, right? How long are they spending on your website? And, and one uh, additional important thing for the session duration is if someone uh, came to your website and immediately left, right? They only visited one page and they either read it for one second or read it for uh, 10 minutes. The um, That specific um customer or visitor that had a uh, obviously had a hundred percent bounce rate because they immediately left they didn't go to other um, they didn't go to other pages uh, their bounce rate would be a hundred percent and their session duration Google doesn't know how long they stayed so for Google a one page visit is basically a zero second uh, session duration and you'll see that later on um, okay so the next thing are the conversions themselves. So what you need to do again, as I mentioned, is you need to, after you install the tracking code, you need to add more um, conversion data, right? What are the important metrics that are uh, considered a conversion or a goal for yourself? So here we set up a specific goal and we can see uh, in our case right here, our goal was if someone filled out our contact form, okay? So here we can see that, for example, um, Google Organic had three forms that were filled out versus, let's say, Yahoo, which only had one, right? Um, so you can kind of set a, a, a value for it, and you can kind of monitor your efforts, right? I'll give you an example. Um, maybe you're paying uh, advertising on Google, and you have, let's say, a, you paid for, let's say, 100 visitors, and each visitor you paid a dollar, so you spend $100, and you had zero uh, conversions. So you may want to rethink about why you're a, what you're doing on your advertising and if it's not working you need to shift your your efforts your time your dollars into um, different avenues that are working better okay um, so for example 
Google Organic, I'm only getting a conversion of 0.04%, while as Yahoo, I'm getting a 013 So uh, Yahoo seems to be working in a better manner, but again, uh, this specific uh, number of visitors, number of sessions is fairly low, so I don't want to come to conclusions on uh, low numbers, okay? Um, so these are kind of things that you're going to see a lot. Now, the every single area that I click on the left will have different different uh, metrics themselves. So typically you'll see a lot of these same um, columns, but the um, sorting on the left will be very different, right? Here I clicked on traffic sources versus if I go to a different section, I can sort by, let's say, language, right? So I can kind of a, get uh, additional information based on the different metrics. So you see sessions and users are still here and conversions, but now I'm looking at languages. Or maybe here I'm looking at the specific countries, right? So if I click, let's say, on US, then I can drill down by right state and then by city, right? So you can continue to kind of drill down. Now, in addition, which is the last thing of this video, is in addition to this one drill down, this one uh, main column, you can add a secondary column right here. So you can either, either switch the main column or you can add another one. So let's say I want to drill down by state. I want to look at my metrics based on state and I want to look based on, let's say, okay, date of, date of the month, right? Or day of the month. Um, so I can notice that in California on the, let's say, let's give a better example here, day of the week, okay? So let's say I noticed that on Tuesdays, I have more traffic from California than I have on, let's say, you know, Sundays, for example. So we'll, we'll go into more detail. It's not the best example right now, but secondary columns are very, very helpful. Um, okay, and the last last thing, sorry, forgot to mention, is we can always use the search box in the advanced search to filter out specific things. If I don't want to see everything from that specific column or that spe specific area, I can use this. So, for example, if I only want to see the Californias, I'll just type in California here and only see the California ones. Okay, um, that's it. So I hope you enjoy this video, and we will be creating the second one very shortly. Thank you. Thank you.